There are um, three organizations that routinely get together. They've been doing so for over seven decades. It's AGC, the Associated General Contractors of America, AASHTO, the American Association of State Highway Transportation Officials, and ARTBA, the American Road Transportation Builders Association. And they put out a joint resolution back in 2015 that said we are having a real problem finding highway construction workers. And we need to figure out how to get people into the industry to fill the jobs that we need to help maintain, build, operate America's roads. And AGC runs a survey every single year, I believe, to kind of test where, how much difficulty their members are having in acquiring people onto the highway construction job sites. And it's rather substantial. They are, over two thirds of the firms are having difficulty filling a lot of the skilled trade positions. So we're talking about carpenters, pipe fitters, plumbers, heavy equipment operators, cement masons, et cetera. All of these skilled craft trades are part of the highway construction industry. I think there is, um, there used to be kind of a, a conduit for these skilled craft trades in former years, decades ago, high schools had shop. Uh, there was a long and, and robust union presence that brought in apprenticeships. Those elements are not part of the workforce equation anymore. These skilled craft trades are not as prevalent as they once were and we need them desperately. Uh, exactly why we can't get, there's, you know, um, for the highway construction industry, they compete with the vertical industry, all the building trades. So a lot of those same skill sets, carpenters, electricians, cement mason, um, pipe fitters, welders, heavy equipment operators, work in the vertical industry as well. And so there's a constant tension and back and forth between where the workers are going to go. And they're going to go where the work is easy to get to. The federal government puts about $40 billion a year into the transportation system. The states put easily that much, and the locals put in uh, a substantial amount as well. So all in, probably somewhere between $75 billion and $100 billion goes into road construction, building, and maintenance on an annual basis. And the states have uh, state transportation improvement plans, which project out for years what the need is going to be. These are the projects we're going to be letting as contracts to the industry over the next four years. So we went to the Department of Labor and said, yeah, we can demonstrate the need. Not only is it now, but it is going to be there for quite some time to come. And if this administration is successful in implementing its infrastructure plan, then it's just going to get even larger because there's a lot of infrastructure across the country that needs to be maintained. So Labor said, yes, we would love to help you. We have a broad network across the country in workforce development boards at the state level and at the local level and they have job centers that are attached to them. So I think there are somewhere in the vicinity of 600 local and state workforce development boards and 2,500 job centers all across the country. Those are our resources to help us recruit, identify, and potentially train people to fill these needs. So we said, okay, let's put together a partnership and see if we can identify how we can do this. The um, Department of Labor has put together a registered apprenticeship program to try and help identify those needs and find a way to get people into apprenticeship programs where they can start building this capacity. Um, they've said there is a screaming need for skilled labor all across the country. The Department of Labor said it's not unique to one state or one city, it's all across the United States. Well, the big challenge was trying to get transportation to the table. So the workforce development boards usually work as part of the governor's economic development function. And they will help try and identify the skill sets that are needed based upon what the state wants to do for the state's economic development. So if the state has targeted manufacturing or healthcare or IT, that's where the workforce development boards are going to work with the state to try and find a way to bring those kinds of workers to the table. I don't think transportation has a seat at that table very often. So we looked at a number of different locations. We looked at states and cities, rural states like Idaho, South Dakota, small states like Rhode Island, Connecticut, and then metropolitan areas all across the country, Los Angeles, St. Louis, Denver, uh, Pittsburgh, because what works in one part of the country may not work in other parts of the country. Relationships in South Dakota are gonna be very different than relationships in Los Angeles. 
So how do we put together these different types of pilots in these different locations and then glean from that something that is workable for a broader constituency and a broader group of uh, potential partners? We're here to help the industry. I mean, the industry identified for us, you know, way back in 2015 when we first had this conversation with them, we have a need. What can we do to help you? I think establishing these types of partnerships enabled the transportation community to get to the table, to tap into the resources that the Department of Labor has to help get a pipeline and a conduit of individuals into the highway construction industry. So really, it is up to the industry to decide that they want to establish this type. We will help facilitate the arrangement. We will help facilitate the partners to come together. We will be the glue, if you will, to at least get it going. Uh, but at the end of the day, the industry needs to come to the table with the need, and they have to be willing to work you know, in partnership with the governmental agencies to see what we can do to help identify individuals for the workforce. A number of the industry members have said, don't worry so much about a trained individual. If you get me someone who can show up for work on time, who's ready to work and willing to work, I'll train them. I have the resources within my organization to train them, and I'd be happy to do so. But I need people to, to be kind of at that entry level to come in and, and work with us. And there is a career in this industry. And it's not just the business end of a shovel anymore. There's a lot of technology that is incorporated into how they are building, maintaining, and operating roads across the country. If you want to establish the type of a partnership in a location where you have a need for highway construction workers, here's how you go about doing it. These are the things you need to pay attention to. Uh, and then we have not just the playbook, but we have a website with a number of technical resources that, that we can use to help you. So if, for example, you want to do this and you think it would be beneficial to put together a peer exchange where you can talk to people who have already been through this and learn from it, we can see if we can get you to sit down with them in a peer exchange. Um, and compare notes and learn from them about what worked and what didn't work and what to pay attention to. And then we can figure out what it is we can do to help you facilitate a, a partnership in the, in the particular area that you want to work in, either at the state level or at the local level or at the city, municipality, city. We'll do what we can to, to try and find some. And then because we can help identify then the workforce development boards through the Department of Labor. We can work with the state DOT. The division office can help potentially in, in some of the identification of the need going forward. So the Workforce Development Board said, you know, just like we did at the national level, how big a need is this? We can help identify that need. And then the industry members come to the table and say, okay, here's what I got, here's what I need, what can you do to help me? <laughs>